Yo guys, what all this stuff is, is stuff to use in your bag when you go urban exploring, legend tripping, tunneling, mousing, whatever it is that you're into. Here's some essentials that you probably should take with you to keep you safe. Let's do it. If you're new to this channel, my name is Ricky Rocket. I am the drummer for Poison, but I like to do legend tripping and urban exploration and that kind of stuff. And that's what I like to put on this channel. I also do a lot of stuff on motorcycles and some reviews. And today I'm kind of doing a review sort of thing. So make sure to subscribe, hit the like button if you like this video and hit the bell so that you can be reminded when I do upload new videos, which is about once a week. So without further ado, let's do this. So the first thing I wanna talk about is lighting. Lights are important, especially when you go into a dark place. A lot of times I go to places during the day. A lot of times it's at night, it just depends. And sometimes even during the day, you go into a place and it's super dark, so lights are important. What I fell in love with for a regular flashlight that is a small flashlight is this Dremel flashlight. It's rechargeable, it's super bright, and it's super reliable. It's got rubber on each end so you can just kind of throw it and it doesn't get hurt. And it's like stainless, it looks like. I just like it. It's got a little bit of weight to it. And there are other options that are a little bit cheaper. This guy is $39.95. It's almost 40 bucks for this thing. I will put a link to this and another choice. A lot of people will use mag beams and they're great too. And they can be used as a weapon, which is exactly why sometimes they can get you into trouble. Because if for some reason you do get caught by the police, they're gonna look at you with a mask and goggles and everything else that I'm gonna get into in a minute. And they're gonna go, what the hell is this dude up to? So um, you gotta be a little careful with that. The next thing is a headlamp. Headlamps are really awesome. They look kind of goofy, but I gotta tell you, man, these things, whoa, I just knocked a battery out. Yeah. Anyway, headlamps are a big deal. I like fairly simple ones. This one, I wish it was just off and on, but it's three different levels. At least it doesn't blink. Um, those drive me crazy. But anyway, this just literally goes around your head. You can see what you're doing. Anywhere you're moving, uh, it, right there you have a work light. This to me is like an essential piece of gear. This one right here is a Milwaukee. This is like 25 bucks, something like that. I'll make a link to it. There's a ton of other ones out there in the market. I just happen to like this one because it's just really solid. Band's really strong and it just, it just feels like a nice piece of gear. It doesn't feel like it's gonna break. This is kind of an interesting discovery for me lately. This is called the Power Cap and basically it is a baseball cap with a light built into the brim. So you can you know, pop this on and again, it might look a little goofy, but I'm telling you, this is a bright light. I mean, it's like, whoa. Now, it's not as bright as a Dremel or a mag beam or something like that. And this has three levels as well. Um, so this is an optional thing. Again, I'm putting links to all this stuff. That covers lighting to me. Some people take lanterns. They like to be able to sit it down uh, so that um, you know they have ambient light wherever they are. Um, I haven't really needed to do that. Um, usually I can just, wherever I'm looking is what I need. So the next thing um, is uh, something that is super, super important, and that is a respirator. And when you're going into these old buildings that have asbestos in the walls and chemicals or who knows what's in there, um, it's really, really important. Uh, this one is a 3M one. I like it because it's got this quick detach thing right here. And the kind of cartridges that you want to get are the pink ones. And that's because these are good for asbestos and chemicals and that kind of stuff. That's important. Just a regular cloth mask is not, it ain't gonna do it, guys. So you gotta really step up your game with this. It's a pain to walk around with this thing hanging on you. When you get into certain situations, it is super, super important for safety. Which brings me to the next thing. The next thing are gloves. These particular ones are Milwaukee gloves. They're uh, nitro gloves. Uh, but they also have a touch thing so you can like use the screen on your camera or your cell phone. 
Uh, these are rubber dipped and they are a cut rating of three. When you're going through these places, there are some nasty things that you're going to encounter. And it's, don't be touching walls with your bare hands. Don't be picking up objects with your bare hands. You don't know what's been in there. You don't know who's been in there. You don't know what, if it's contaminated with anything. And so it is super, super important to protect your hands. So you're going to protect your breathing and you're going to protect your hands. You're also going to protect your eyes. And I recommend goggles that wrap around. These particular ones uh, are like sort of gummy, uh, meaning I can bend them. And they're big enough that if you wear glasses, you can pop them over your glasses. And they don't let any air in on the side. So if you like open a dusty door and all the stuff comes out, you got your breathing apparatus on, you got your goggles and you're not getting any of that stuff uh, in your body. Sometimes you only need to breathe something bad once and you're done. It, you may not know it for years later. I don't want to scare anybody, but <clears throat> it's really important to wear a mask in old buildings especially, uh, or places that <laughs> there may have been some weird chemical thing going on. The other thing I want to talk about is a very simple piece of kit, and that's a carabiner. So you definitely want to grab a couple carabiners. This carabiner here is a pretty cool little carabiner. It's called a Hero Clip. And what's different about this, and these are a little pricey, okay? This is 20 bucks for this thing. You can buy a pack of carabiners for like 10 bucks, okay? But uh, this one uh, is a little different because um, you pop this out, you turn it, and flip it over. Now you can hang uh, your stuff. Uh, somewhere you can like clip this to your bag and then you can hang this up in your closet or in a weird spot where you don't want to lay your bag on the ground and then you flip it back over and clamp it back up and it's just a regular carabiner all over again this thing is really really cool a regular carabiner is going to look more like this that I have on this radio which is going to be the next thing I'm going to talk about I will make a link to the hero clip but I also make a link to a three pack of pretty solid carabiners for 10 bucks and please buy from my affiliate links if you can because it supports this channel because my accountant has been telling me hey look support your channel without coming out of pocket which is really hard to do because as far as youtube goes i'm a small timer anyway this guy right here is called the rocky talkie and it is a walkie talkie that is just awesome it comes out of colorado it is just simple and rugged it's got two carabiners so that you can't lose it. Um, you buy a pair of them, they pair perfectly. You can read all about it on their website at rockytalkie.com. I'm not affiliated with them, so my affiliate link is going to go on Amazon, but you can go right through their website if you want to because uh, they have a very, very interesting website. I've had several different pairs of walkie-talkies over the years, and these are by far the best ones that I have found. The other cool thing I want to talk about is a little bag so that you can put some of these items in. And I'm going to get into camera bags and backpacks in just a minute. But these bags are made by a company called Portabrace. They make a lot of stuff for cinema cameras and uh, high-end you know, cameras. But their, their bags aren't super expensive or anything. And they're just super soft, right? And they come in all these different sizes. This one is like a like a tarpaulin maybe or something. Uh, let's say you put all your lighting stuff in one bag. There you have it and you can label it, put a piece of tape on it and label it or just remember it or color code it somehow. That way you can always do like a quick check of your stuff. And their bags are awesome too. I'm not going to be going over their bags today for this purpose because uh, what you're doing with urban exploration is hiking and their bags are a little more heavy duty. Probably a little too heavy for this. Although there is one bag that works pretty well. Last thing I want to talk about as far as personal gear are boots. But right here, Merrill Tactical Boots. These things are awesome. They look rugged, they are rugged, but they're so light. It's amazing. You know, you tie them up, you get them to the way you want them to fit, and then you just zip the things up and you're good to go. They're just awesome. They're already dirty from another place. Up. Is that? That is my recommendation. Some people like to wear sneakers, 
I mean, some people even like boots that come all the way up, but I at least like something over my ankle. I would just rather have boots on. There's glass that you're going to step on, maybe. There's chemicals. You go in some of these places, drug addicts have hung out in there. They may have needles on the ground. I mean, you just want solid footwear, okay? Solid footwear and gloves, okay? As far as clothes go, I have this policy that there's nothing I'm going to wear that I wouldn't be that upset if I had to throw it away. Because you never know. Uh, what could happen. I like pants that have a little bit of a resilient type of material. Now sometimes when I'm doing these YouTube videos I wear something that is you know looks a little better on camera but like a long sleeve shirt with a Wiccan material is actually the best. Uh, sometimes a hoodie depending on what the weather's like. Water retardant stuff is, is great. I also keep a knife with me which it's a very inexpensive solution and it is by Google and you can get it at Home Depot and it's a spring assist so it's not like a switchblade but it, it flips out and the thing I like about it is if for some reason I needed to pull something stick something in a crack or do something and it broke I can get another one it's not like some custom special knife but it's solid it works really good uh, and that anyway so the next thing I want to talk about are these bags okay so this is a porta brace bag but and and this works great okay this is I, I forget what model this is but it is one of their small bags and inside of it that's the main thing I want to talk about is inside of it is the camera that I like the most for videotaping and vlogging during urban exploration now right now I'm shooting on the Canon R5 I do a lot of stills with Leica cameras a lot of people love the Sony a7s3 I think that's an amazing camera. It's solid. It's a workhorse. It's great in low light. I look horrible on it. I look horrible. I'm getting old as it is. I don't need it to make me look even older, and that's what Sony does to me. But the Olympus actually has a beautiful picture. It has in body camera stabilization, and it shoots in 4K. Um, and it has really good autofocus. It's not the best in the business, but it's really, really good. I used to have a Panasonic GH5, and this lens is actually off of Panasonic, so you can mix Panasonic lenses with Olympus and Olympus with Panasonic. This is a 12 to 35. It's great for vlogging. This is my favorite camera for just because it's so light. I love to take it on the motorcycle. I love to do urban exploration with it, video vlogs. Not the best for B-roll where you're getting like these big wide epic uh, shots. I tend to do that with my either my red Komodo if I have help that day or uh, the Canon R5 or something like that. However, when I'm by myself and I'm on the motorcycle, this is the camera. So when I'm doing a vlog, the other part that I use here is Deity has this mic, and I'll put a link to this thing. Uh, basically, what it has is it has two mics on it. So you put this one, you put it this way, and you can talk in this side, and then this side gets uh, your subject. So if you have other people involved, uh, it's just so cool. Uh, or you can turn one of the sides off. The other thing I like to do is take a handle. This one is super simple. You just pop it on here. So I got it on. So this handle is good. Some people like it like this. Some people like to flip it around because there are times where uh, it'll balance better depending on what lens you have on the camera. And so I get that. And you can just get these really nice sweeping shots. Sometimes you want to just put your thumb there so it doesn't rock like this. But this has great in-body camera stabilization. And this camera is just so cool. That is what goes in my bag. But what bag do I put it in? Now, I have some ideas and I'm going to show you what they are. So this is the Shimoda Action X30. They come in a couple of different sizes. This is a little bit smaller. And they also have another series called the Explorer. I have an Explorer 30, or no, that one's a 40, and that's a little bit bigger. I have my Leica set up in that right now. This, to me, is the best bag, period, for urban exploration as far as camera bags go. Here's the thing. This is a little flippy floppy for, uh, for to me, for every day. 
uh, if you're just a photographer or you're a videographer. Um, to me, it, it's just a little bit too, it doesn't have enough structure to it. Uh, but for urban exploration, it's light. I mean, this thing is light, and you can take your uh, your carabiner, right? And probably the medium size, I would say. And clip that back here. And then when you get to a place and you need to hang it up, you can hang it up. And you can just hang this up anyway, like in your office or wherever you keep your stuff. So this bag, to me, is just seriously uh, the ultimate bag. I'm going to go through all these compartments and you won't see me on camera when I do it because I don't have an overhead camera right now. Although I could do it with the, hmm, I could do it with the Olympus. I'll do it with the Olympus. All right, so we're recording. We're recording on the Olympus. What's cool is this compartment. It's a roll top and you can put all kinds of stuff in here either loosely or there is a cube that you can also get that is that is smaller than the main compartment. And so you could drop, or you could have all your stuff in these little uh, quarter brace bags and you could go ahead and, you know, drop them in there and have those labeled. Um, I mean, I can easily fit my mask in here, um, uh, my gloves, you know, all my stuff will fit in there. You can see what this looks like when you're doing a selfie. So I'm just going to go right to the main compartment of this bag right away. And what this is, is a cube. And it's a really solid camera cube. There's one that goes the whole length. I like this one because, like I said, I like this spot over here. If you come to the top, you get this spot. And that's where you can put all your other stuff and keep it away from your camera gear. So in here, you know, put your camera, uh, a couple of lenses, um, put your mic in here, you know, their handle, all that stuff that I showed you in the other bag. Uh, and that way I'm not carrying two bags. I know some people actually do that, but to me that's a little bit crazy. The other thing that's great about this bag is that this goes around your waist. And you may not be like a waist person that likes it around your waist, but when you're hiking, uh, it's important. I don't like things hanging off of my body when I don't like carabiners and all kinds of stuff hanging off of my body when I'm exploring or if I'm crawling through something, everything gets caught. I like everything in a bag. And to me, this just works really well. This has a place for uh, your water. This is a water bottle uh, pack right here. Um, on the side, you can actually put a tripod, and I'm gonna show you my tripod solution in just a second. You got handles on each side. I mean, this bag, I can't say enough good stuff about it. I have an affiliate link. Uh, and you do get like 10% off on all the Shimoda stuff. I love this piece of gear. This thing is called the Switch Pod. And when it first came out on Kickstarter, I'm like, I really want that, but I don't want to. I, ha I had to get something else, so I got a Gorilla Pod. A lot of YouTubers use those. And I do have the Peak Design small tripod too, uh, but I don't have the carbon fiber one. But we'll do tripods another day. I just want this one for the urban exploration stuff. So this is called the Switch Pod. And as you can see, this is how it mounts. And I'm going to show you what this thing does. So you put your camera in it, obviously, tighten it down, really tighten it down. Take your flippy screen like this, turn on your camera, and bam, look at this. I can vlog with this. So then when I get to my destination, I open it up like this, and it becomes a tripod. Freaking awesome. I love this. Plus, if you use a ball mount on here, you can bend it any which way you want. So if you're on uneven ground, but this is magnetized, so then you just flip it back again. Switch pod. They didn't pay me for this. That covers bags, camera. Like I said, there's so many cameras out there. They're just tools. These are just ideas for you, and I'm sure I left something out, and if there's something in your kit that you use, 
leave a comment down below and tell us what it is. Again, don't forget to subscribe. That really is the best way to support this channel so that I can keep growing and reaching out. Every time uh, I get more subscribers, then YouTube recommends it to more people and more people get to see the video and they know that I actually, a lot of people don't know I have a, a YouTube channel. And even if they come upon it, they're like, that can't be the guy in Poison. Why would he be doing that? I mean, this is my hobby. This is my fun stuff. This is stuff I enjoy doing. And it's not really work to me. It's really a lot of fun. So, oh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Ring that bell so you get notifications. Like Ricky always says, take care of each other and keep rock alive. <laughs>